I'm OT Wool, you just jumped off the porch with dirty glove bastards. Quick trip gang. I ain't screaming Uno out when I drop four. four. Bad bitch ran passenger, she don't smoke. No. She trying to put me on. Alright, today we got OT Wu jumping off the porch with us today. Quick trip game, man. You already know what the fuck going on, man. For sure. How you feeling, game? Good. It's a pleasure to have you here with us for sure. For sure, for sure. It's a pleasure being here. Nah, for real. So tell us what you out here working on in Atlanta. Man, just a lot of music, man. I'm working on my new tape. I just dropped the uh what was that? The world is yours. I just dropped that. Y'all can get that on all platforms. But shit, yeah, just working on some new music, about to shoot some videos. Probably shoot this video I got uh, with Casino, pre band, yeah. For the show, ain't nothing bigger than that bird. Come on now. So tell us, for those who don't know, how would you describe life back at home in Pontiac, Michigan? Shit, man. Pontiac, man, it's cool. It was cool growing up. It's, it's not like Bloods and Crips, it's like Southwest, East, North, you feel me? So, I mean, it's like any other hood, you know, like everybody says it's like any other hood, but it's definitely active shit going on, you feel me? Like, it's small as hell, so everybody know like where everybody live at. But for the most part, we got a, we got a good music. You know what I'm saying? Everybody everybody going crazy with the music right now. So shit, it, it, it's, a, it's a, like whole Michigan going crazy right now from Michigan, from Pontiac to Detroit to Flint. So that's basically like Pontiac. Yeah, it's just it's turned up for the show. How would you describe your childhood coming up out there? My childhood, shit. It was cool. Shit, I stayed on the east side, grew up on the same block my mama grew up on, feel me? So shit, you know, just falling right in the place. I used to be like in my grandma crib. That's where I really, you know, turned up a lot. My grandma crib got ready to like, probably like seven, eight times. So the police, they already know that crib, like that crib now, you feel me? Like I'm from a, uh, that one way. But yeah, it was cool, you feel me? Like shit, all love, nigga tried to hoop and shit, but you know, I just end up starting rapping and shit, but. Pontiac is cool, like any other hood. Say that. So being from one of the roughest parts of the city, how traumatic was it to see somebody die at just eight years old? Uh, shit. I ain't really know what to think of that shit, you know? I just seen it, you feel me? It was just like some glimpse shit, like that shit was just, mm-hmm. It seemed like, I, I really wasn't affected by it because after that, it just seemed like a brown there. It was just regular, feel me? But it wasn't like, it was like, shit, whatever. Straight up. When would you say you jumped off the porch? Shit. When I was like 13, when I found my first crack rock, I found my first crack rock. I was walking down the street with my boy Cadero, man. Free my nigga, man. He got a, he got an L piece. But yeah, we was walking down the street and we, uh, we found a crack rock, like walking to the store and shit. And we took it back to this this lady we knew in the hood that, you know, be moving around. And she took that shit from us, feel me? Like, and then give us shit. We like, damn, we know that shit was our son. And then shit, from that point, we know, niggas just jumped off the porch. That's crazy. <laughs> Talk about being a resident of California and Las Vegas. Well, Cali and Vegas, shit. Cali, Cali and Vegas, I'm like my second homes. I've been going, let me put that lighter out. I've been going there for so long, so shit, it just be like, kind of like back home. I've been visiting Cali and, and Vegas for like, since I was like probably like 13, you feel me? Like my grandma, she drove us from Pontiac to Colorado to Vegas, my first trip, and I was, shit, I was open every since, but shit, I love Cali, you know, good weed, bad bitches, shit. Vegas, the same thing, fast, fast paced, bump to a lot of good people. Yeah, it's totally different in my city though, you know, it's way more bigger. How would you say the West Coast compares to Michigan? Well, Michigan cold as hell. Everybody mad as hell mugging. Feel me like shit. But our food good as fuck in Michigan, shit. That's where mostly all my family at, you feel me? Cali, I got a lot of family out there too. But Cali is like fast paced, but you know, it's a lot of fake fakeness going on too. Like people smiling in your face, like, but really got arterial motives type shit, but it's like good on a lot of other parts too, like with the weed and the l l linking up with people in the studio. There's a lot of good producers and a lot of, a lot of good opportunities, more opportunities in Cali and, and Vegas than it is in Michigan. That's what I say the biggest, biggest difference. Even though 
Michigan, we got a lot of people coming into town, you know, checking out our music and shit and fucking with us and doing collabs and shit, but out of state, you gonna rub the right shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, more shoulders than you would at home, you feel me? Yeah. What would you say is the biggest life lesson you learned so far growing up? Uh, shit, basically, man, be patient with life and, and every year, shit, evolve in this shit, you feel me? Like, like when you look back next year, be like, shit, you know, it's way different than last year. You ain't just look up and you just doing the same shit. And just like, basically like, keeping my circle like cheery up, you feel me? Like small as hell, you feel me? Like, it be motherfuckers just come out, the, out of the woodwork when you doing this, this rap shit. Straight up. What would you say is the biggest obstacle you had to overcome so far in life? Shit, basically like breaking my old habits, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm quick to snap, you feel me? Like just breaking the mold, just starting to be more patient, like being more easy going with this music shit, like not just, you know what I'm saying? Being more like kind of like a people person. I always been that, but like I be quick to get into that mode when you like dealing with certain people, you gotta be, you know, you know structure yourself. So yeah, like switching just from going from the streets to really trying to be like, all the way like a, a real rapper, you feel me? Like, yeah. yeah, you can't be like quick to snap. You gotta be able to, you know. Gotta be able to adapt. Definitely. So when would you say you started making music? Shit, honestly, man, I was young rapping Jake the Snake. That's like a, that's like a nigga from back home, Jake the Flake. I was like young rapping that. I used to be at my birthday parties rapping, you feel me? I, got, I like, my parent, my people got like pictures, of, I mean videos of me like rapping in my backyard and my parties and shit. I was just, like when I used to do like talent shows, I was, I had dance, girl dancers in my back when I was young, you feel me? Like I have been fucking with the rap shit, but like literally taking it serious and like investing in it like, like four, five years, you feel me? Like all the mother years, I was just doing it just, getting a niche for it, like in and out with the streets, you know what I'm saying? Going doing that shit for fun. <laughs> Straight up. So what motivated you to start making music? Uh, well really my cousin, he used to rap my cousin Key Man, that nigga used to rap. I used to be like, damn, this nigga cold as hell, you feel me? And uh, yeah, that nigga used to be rapping and shit, so I'm like, shit. I'm about to tell my story, you feel me? Cuz can do it, you feel me? He, he, used to, he used to make beats too. That nigga started making beats, giving me beats. So I just started rapping. I mean, I'm, I'm knee deep in the, you feel me? My area, everything going on. So it was so easy to tell my story. But I ain't, but like, why I say like five years because I started freestyling like five years ago, you feel me? And that's when I was able to like paint the picture as vivid as I wanted to. Like back then, I was putting like little bits and pieces, but like now nah, I can put it all in there, you feel me? Cause yeah. it's like, it's so freelance. Like I just be, it's easy. But yeah, that's what motivated me to rap. My cousin, he was, he was going crazy. And I'm like, shit, I can do that shit too. For sure. Who would you list as some of your musical influences? I like Gucci. I like Nas. I like I like the Benny Siegel. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Those some of the top for real. I like the uh, definitely Jay Z. You know that nigga go crazy. Feel me? I like I like a lot of music that people wouldn't even think I like. Feel me? It don't even just be rap. I done rubbed off of all type of genres. That's why if like if you listen to my music, I got like sample beats, a lot of shit like I. I got an old soul, you feel me? So when would you say you started taking music serious? Serious? What's this, 2021? Yeah. Uh, probably like 2016. Like 2015. I always took it serious, don't get me wrong. Like, I've been having a follow my people in my city. They been fucking with me like heavy and shit, but like, Far as when I liked it, started liking how I was the shit that I was really, really pushing, pushing. Probably like 2015, 2016, I got my bag. Everything was flowing. When I learned, when I really got in the studio and freestyle, and knew I could do that shit, it was over. You feel me? Like it saved me a lot of time. I got my own house studio and started recording myself. You feel me? I know the mix and shit. So that shit. After that, it was over. Straight up. How would you say you got your rap name? 
people shit. They be calling me Woo since I was young, like a baby. That always been my name, like, my name was always Woo. I put the OT on there because I'm always out of town. Feel me? Like, I'd have been a 27 state, so. I just added the out of town, feel me? My gang, Quick Trip, feel me? Like, so, we do Quick Trips, we always out of town and shit, you feel me? So that's how I got my name, it was simple. That's fire, I yeah. fuck with that. For sure. How would you describe your current thoughts on rap game? Ah. The rap game, man, it's what you take of it. Like, it's goofy, then there's some niggas that's going crazy, like snapping, like it's just all over the place. Like, you just gotta get in where you fit in, honestly, you feel me? Like, like rub the right shoulder, do what you gotta do, keep staying your movement, don't let the, what's going on in the rap industry sway you, you feel me? Cause that shit, I don't, I listen to a lot of people, but I don't never go in the studio like, oh, I'm about to try to, you feel me, sound like this or sound like that. I, my style is my style, you feel me? Like yeah. I can't I can't even do it. Straight up. But yeah, the rap game is it's cool it's cool. I, I still I, I like to see like there's a lot of niggas touching some real paint right now, you feel me? So like I love that, love to see my black niggas shine. But other than that other than that shit, that shit it, it's kinda goofy. It's a lot of dance songs, TikTok and all that shit. Even though I got a lot of TikTok fans too, but I'm talking about all, you know, all that. I ain't with all that. I'm, I, with my music, when you listen to my shit, you're gonna hear nothing but real, genuine, my life shit, you feel me? If you don't like that, you then you just don't like me as a person because my shit is literally all me. Like, there's no cap and no bar. Like, my niggas won't even let me, they ain't gonna even, if I drop some bullshit, they gonna be like, that ain't even it, you feel me? Like, it's like one bar, like, so, and they ain't never had to do that, but I'm just saying, like, I already know that would it be. That's what it be. Even my mama, my mama, she listen to my music. She my biggest fan. You feel me? So she'd be like, uh, uh. She'd have been knee deep with me, so she already know what it is. You yeah. Know? What would you say is the biggest sacrifice you had to make for you to be successful? Man, cutting people off, cutting them, 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 them sideline hoes always trying to pop out when we out, cutting them niggas that ain't. Ain't about the movement and try ain't helping promote, ain't ain't with the whole movement. Them two right there, like sacrificing that. And them be people that you got love for, you feel me? But at the same time, to elevate, you really be having to cut people off and clear your mind. So that I say that. And family too, you feel me? Like family, they sometimes they don't be having your best interest, sometimes they do. Straight up. You know? How would you describe the music scene back at home in Pontiac, Michigan right now? Well, just Michigan overall, because y'all all piped up, like you said, different Turned cities. up. Like yeah. everybody, it's, a, it's like an energy, you feel me? Like everybody, it's like, if it ain't street competition, it's friendly competition. But everybody, like, they come with their best videos, best songs. Niggas tripping, you feel me? Like from, from Pontiac, Pontiac, I, it's a whole bunch of niggas going crazy, you feel me? And Detroit, Flint. And that's about, that's about the three top cities. I know that niggas really, you know what I'm saying, snapping. But yeah, Michigan got a good, we, they, they shedding, the, the uh, industry shedding their light on us right now. You feel yeah. me? Like from uh, Rio, Free Rio, he, Free he going Rio, crazy. Free Rio, that's one of my favorites. Uh, who else going crazy right now? It's a lot peasy. That's my boy, he going crazy. RMC Mike. Mike, RMC Mike, that's from Flint. Drago, Bino, them my boys, they going crazy. There's a lot of niggas going crazy. Maybe Faze, Ray. Oh, Ray going crazy. Ray, 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 Ray got Ray, the Ray, holding it, Ray holding it down. Him and Vezo, you feel me? They they doing their thing. Like Michigan as a whole, they going crazy. Yeah. It's funny that you say them two names because like we be having a debate down here, like in the office and shit. Like we been hearing about Babyface, Ray, and Icewear Vezo for years. Right. So it's like it's crazy just now to see they getting the notoriety that they've been deserved. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy to see that. But see like. Like, it just be like, shit, they, they knew they been supposed to get their notoriety because back home, we loved them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the Team East Side movement and, and Dope Boys Cash Out, you feel me? They, they, they both had movements that, like, people grew up on, you feel me, back home in Michigan. Like, whether you was from Pontiac, Flint, Southfield, Oak Park, wherever you was from, you would listen to one of them, too, you feel yeah. me? So, like, Vezo and, and, and Ray, they been going crazy. It's just like they just had to spend their movement, do shows out of town, yeah. feel me, to where people get to hearing them more or drop songs that was more for the people, you feel me, like more than just Detroit or Michigan type music, you feel yeah. me? So like once they did that, expanded their brand, they went crazy. Straight mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Why do you think people overlook the talent coming out of Pontiac? 
because we a small city, man, and, like, we hold each other back in Pontiac. Like, honestly, like, it's a lot of hate, you feel me? Like, like I told you earlier, like, it's a southwest, east, north, you feel me? Like, it's, it's separated, you feel me? So, like, it be people that mix in, that fuck with each, each side, you feel me? But, like, that, it's so much different hate that we would be holding each other back when we when really we be having artists that everybody can show support to yeah. and, and make and make them blow up but they be like I, I, I I'm they pick sides you feel me so like that's the only thing I feel like holding us back and ain't enough light shed on us but we starting to get our light too our, our light too you feel me like we got a lot of battle rappers and a couple of niggas rapping in the shout industry. out Ill Will yeah my shout out my boy Ill Will Mac Myron J C them all my people yeah so it's on straight like that. Talking about being an owner of Roadrunner Clothing, man. Where can we get that at? Man, go on, uh, shit. You can go to my Instagram page. That's going to take you to the web page. But, yeah, Roadrunner Clothing, yeah. Heavy drip going on. I should have that shit on right now, you feel me? But, like, they already know what it is. But, yeah, I started that back in, like, I think, like, 2014. Yeah, and that shit just took off, man. Like, I honestly made it for myself, you feel me? Because, like... That's my whole movement. Like it was Roll Runner, Quick Trip. You feel me? Before it was Quick Trip, it was Roll Runner. You feel me? I was Roll Runner. Woo, you feel me? Like, and then Quick Trip. But like, I made that shit for myself. Printed it up, posted it on Facebook. Like me in it, and that shit went viral overnight. Like people was trying to get orders. So I'm like, shit, I ain't never sold clothes for you. Feel me? I'm just, you know, pressed. I was like, shit, fuck it. I started pressing that shit up. Started selling out. So shit. It's been that now. Now I, I do it more like for the merch. You feel me? Like that's real though. Yeah. So like, cause I be so busy in the studio and shit. But like, I definitely still be printing up shit, keep the merch going, hats. So yeah, make sure y'all go tap in, roll running clothing. For sure. Cool trip. So these folks saying the first time Method Man from Wu Tang Clan smoked runs, you gave it to him. <laughs> definitely. That's a fact. My boy Ill Will and uh, Method Man had a video on Pontiac. I pulled up. We was all out there chilling, man. It was a good vibe. And uh, I had a big ass bag of runs. I just got some some, some LA runs. And I had, I went up to him and I was about to blow one with him. He said he had a cold. He's like, he ain't want to blow. He's like, I'm like, I'm like, damn. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to blow with, you know, my nigga meth. So I'm like, I went in my bag. I grabbed a, a big ass handful. I'm like, you ever, I was like, I like, this some runs. I'm like, you want to blow some runs? He's like, runs? What's that? You feel me? I'm like, I'm like, blow this. So look, I gave it to him. So in the middle of the video shoot, and y'all can ask Method Man for sure. In the middle of the video shoot, he stopped the video shoot. He said, hey, where that nigga Wu at? Hey, this some kill right here, you yeah. feel me? Yep. So, so he fucked with the run. So y'all, the first time my nigga Method Man blew runs with me for sure. That was, that was an honor. I fucked with, I, I yeah. watched the Wu-Tang show now. That shit hard as hell. We was just watching the last night one. Look, that shit I swear. That's fire. How did you end up working with FBG Casino for Gas Packs? Okay, casino, yeah, man. Uh, my cousin Jig, man, he, he, uh, that's that's a casino people, man. He plugged me in and shit. We went out to the studio and shit, just knocked that shit out. Like we really did that song, honestly. Probably like forty minutes an hour. I came in, we the producer uh had the beat. I can't think of the producer, but man, shout out to my nigga, them my niggas. And uh, shit, he made he whipped up the beat. Well, he already had the beat made, and casino was like that's the one. I jumped on there through the hook, casino jumped on that bitch, shit, I jumped on there, it was quick. Like, we freestyle, got that shit done, quick as hell. So yeah, that was that was simple. My cousin Jig, he plugged that in, shout out to him. Straight up. What can you tell us about your new project, The World Is Yours? The World Is Yours, all right, that's a, that's a good ass question, man. Honestly, Scarface, my favorite movie, nigga. Like, I watch that shit at least two times out the year. And, I, and why? Because it has come up, it just basically it's got so many different points in the movie to where I, every time I watch it, I get something different out of it, no matter if I, like I'm down in a year, because it's been years I've been down and years I've been up. And when I watch Scarface, no cap, nigga, it has it, it, it triggered something, you feel me? And it, 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 I, I changed to some totally different shit. So when I, was, when I was coming up with my tape name, I'm like, shit, I got to do some Scarface shit, you feel me? Like I always watch that shit, so I based it off that. My boy did the little uh, little animation uh, album cover and shit. It was that, and then they put the samples on there. Like on every song, it got like a, a sample from the movie. You feel me? It's like, and that shit like we listened to the tape earlier. That shit like it's so much a part of me because that movie I've been watching since I was probably since like I was probably like seventeen, 
every time I watch it, I get a different shit out of there because that nigga really feel me, came from nothing and want to take and you know what I'm saying when he got up in the in the game, he wasn't timid. You feel me? You can't be like that. You gotta be. It's already in us. You feel me? For sure. So that shit flow smooth. What would you say is your personal favorite song from the project? Uh, 4800. Cause really, that video was crazy. <coughs> that video crazy. I shot that. Vi- I went back home to Michigan. I shot like six videos, like videos I did features with people. But I shot that. Like everybody in that video, most mostly is my family. You feel me? Like I got my grandma in there, threeking. Feel me? I got my uncle, my cousins. Like I got my boy Deezy, rest in peace. He was in his uh his car. Mark was in there. We was in front of his people house. Uh, Miss Jackson. Shout out to my boy Big Jess. Feel me? So like, yeah, it was like a good movement. Like when I pulled up to the hood, like nobody was on the block, and I literally was just hopping out, like about to shoot scenes, and then next thing I looked up, it's like 50 people outside. You feel me? Like. I bring my hood out, you feel me? So like it was just all up, but really I was just doing it on some, just trying to do some video shit, but it ended up turning out crazy. And my grandma got in the video, she don't even take pictures, you feel me? So that shit was like, that, that's why I like that song the most. And the song hard, but the visual is way more hard. So make sure y'all go tap into that 4800 OT Woo. Straight up. Talk to us about your grind as an independent artist. Man, my grind is everything. And I don't even be trying to, Ain't, ain't even no point in being humble. Cause I really, I do everything. I, I put all the moves together. I ain't got no manager behind this shit. This is all me. Feel just me? So quick like, trip game. Just quick trip, I swear. So, and I got a lot of artists coming up. So I have quick trip snaps, quick, quick trip three, my nigga L's coming. We just all coming right now. So basically I, I do all the videos. I, I sometimes edit my videos. I record myself. I send it to the send it to Empire to put out. I uh, I do everything. I tell the director what the scenes to shoot. I'm real. I'm all the way hands on my music. You feel me? So like, and it pay off too. Like I don't even be tripping about doing it no more because I'm so used to it. You feel me? Like so when well, if I do ever get with a label or if I do get that one backing, it's already it's gonna be even better. You feel me? Because I'm already used to doing this shit by myself. So that shit ain't shit. Straight up. What would you say is the biggest challenge that comes along with being an independent artist? Funding everything. Yeah. That's it. Like, that's it. Other than that, everything flow. Like, I'm, the mix is, it come with it. You feel me? So, like, uh, it's just fun and everything. But that shit don't be nothing because, you know, this shit is that. It fun itself because, you know, from the strings and, you know, all the, you know, distribution and shit. But just funding it. Just basically, like, once somebody else gets the funding, like, that that should make it easier. So what else you working on? Right now, man, I'm just re- I'm about to do this movie in Pontiac with my boy Meezy, Elite Media. Uh, he got a movie about to come out. I, I can't think of the name right now. But other than that, I'm just working on my tape, man. Putting all these visuals out from the World Is Yours tape because I only did probably like two videos off of that. I just dropped, oh yeah, that Truths video. Make sure y'all go tap into that too. I just dropped it off World Is Yours, but other than that shit, that's about it. Just a couple couple little videos, shit, off the tape and working on my, I don't even know what I'm gonna name my new tape. I'm still working on that right now, but shit, that's my new tape and visuals in the movie. Any last words and shout outs? Man, rest in peace to my nigga DZ, rest in peace Bricks. Free D Pain, free my nigga Rob J, with him old Perkins Justin, man. Y'all know how we coming, man. Shout out to all my niggas. Quick trip gang, we in this bitch. For sure. OT will we appreciate having you today, gang. It's on. Gang. I ain't screaming Uno out when I draw fuck. fuck. Bad bitch ran passenger, she don't smoke. Nope. She trying to put me on stocks, but I don't trust. I don't trust. 